Alright guys, so it's that time of the year again where you guys are probably like, dang, I'm going into an IB curriculum. It's going to be hard pressed. So we're going to have to ask ourselves, what classes are we going to take in order to succeed better and go into something that we actually want to learn? <laughs> Alright. Alright, so first we're going to talk about IB English. Uh, all of us here take SL English, so some of the positives about that. On all of your exams, you'll have guiding questions. Things to sort of help you along with your uh, essay writing or your IOC. Something to really inform you and get you on the right track. HL doesn't have these, so it's sort of an immediate bonus for any of the exams you'll take and all, all the tests you take throughout the year. Uh, some other things that are bonuses is you don't have to read as many books as the HL kids do, and uh, the books you do read are exactly the same, so you can work with them still. And then one of the other great things about English overall in general is a lot of the teachers are really awesome and really great uh, in helping to teach you, so no need to worry about uh, your teacher. So in SL English, we don't really focus on poetry much of the time. So in your paper one, you have the choice between analyzing a prose and a piece of poetry. So in that, you're kind of focused or forced to focus on the prose rather than the poetry, and it kind of limits your options. Also, with the paper two, since you don't read as many novels as HL English, there are less um, choices of comparison and contrast between the fewer novels that you have. So, um... <coughs> Uh, it doesn't really matter which class you like want to take because uh, they're both basically similar. It's just HLs you need to write more. Um, so honestly, it's just, do I really want to learn English? And if you do, we'd say HL. But if you're like, English isn't really the subject for me, then that'd be the SL path. So, uh, what classes should you take? So group two, you'll have your language B or your foreign language language that you apply. So at STEM, we have French, Spanish, and German, as you all know. So you don't really have a choice of which language you took. You chose that freshman year when you came into STEM, and you'll have to deal with that for the rest of your time here. But the question now becomes, do you want to take HL or SL of the language? So some pros to taking SL is you have less assessments at the end of the year. You, have, you don't have to write as much uh, in your paper two, and your paper one is a little bit easier than a, an HL paper two. A uh, paper one, sorry. And the other thing is, another pro of taking SL language is just in general, you have less to read. It's just less co workload overall, uh, but you really don't get as much full understanding of grammar and the language and the types of uh, how culture plays into the language as you would in HL. So uh, if you're really not super into your language, uh, you know, you won't get it. You don't need to do as much work for it. So one con to taking SL of any of these languages is that if you want to maybe um, skip a language class or a language um, necessity in your college or later on university, the SL classes won't really count for much of, um, much of anything or like um, points towards that. So if you want to um, skip that later on, taking an HL class would be easier for that. So, uh... For our recommendation, we would definitely say lean towards SL because they're basically the same except this you'd have to be, HL you'd have to be more familiar or like fluent in the language in order to uh, take it. Whereas SL, it's like uh, I can just go on with that, and focus on your HL somewhere else. So, uh, what class should you take? Uh, which level should you take for IB history? So we've all taken HL history, and you know. There's a lot of positives to it, despite what people may say. Uh, first thing is, you're gonna get a much more comprehensive view of history, in depth uh, and across the board. Uh, you're gonna learn more about history and it can really help you in a lot of other classes, actually, uh, if you don't know. Um, some in the HL only topics, which are civil rights and protests, and it's changing from our year, but I'm sure whatever you learn about the Americas is gonna be very helpful and very useful, and something that you don't really learn about as in depth uh, in another type of curriculum, and you won't learn about at all in an SL curriculum. HL is also really great because your writing skills are sort of put to the test, and you can really become a better writer uh, through it, and uh, that's it. I, 
The only real negative to taking HL history is that you have a lot more readings to do and they're a little bit longer and more time consuming, but honestly they're very helpful for you in the end, so you should do the readings no matter what level you pick because then it's going to boost your grade through reading checks and everything. And also the only other thing is that you have to take a paper three, which is something that the SL don't have to do, which is three essays in two and a half hours, which is one of the longest IB exams. However, it's not really that bad because the information you learn is civil rights and protests and everything within the Americas and it's really helpful for you and I would still take HL history. So our recommendation on your IB history is we would lean towards the HL side uh, because you're basically learning the exact same content it's just HL you go a bit deeper and the paper three is not actually that scary it's just uh, just causes hand cramps but uh, we'll easily walk that off your teachers have prepared you enough so I'd lean towards HL with this one. So, now we move on to group four, or your science. Uh, so, we offer biology, chemistry, and physics at the Stanford Academy, as you all know. You've all taken uh, all three of them by now. And so, many people choose to take uh, biology and chemistry. Those are the two largest groups of kids in the STEM Academy, uh, and both of them are very valuable. Biology tends to be very easy, uh, for anybody, you can really pick it up quickly and learn the content very easily. Chemistry is chosen by a lot of kids because chemistry goes into a lot of the sciences, physics and bio, and it's very multi-purpose. People really want, who want to go to chemistry, take chemistry. And then physics is also uh, an awesome class because you know, you sort of take it your freshman year, but you don't even understand most of, you don't even get into most of physics there. You really get to full, explore the full field of physics in IB, and you get to, you know, take a lot more in and learn a lot more about the universe and physics on a larger scale besides, I'm gonna drop a ball. <laughs> so, uh, definitely all three of the sciences are really great, uh, but definitely most people lean towards bio and chemistry. So the negatives of each of these classes is that I take biology and so I really enjoy biology but the thing is, is that it's a lot of memorization so it's going to take a lot of time to study after class and understand all the different concepts and really it is just a lot of memorization of different things that you have to understand in order to um, comprehend biology itself so that's a pretty big downfall of biology. Chemistry, I don't take it, but I've never heard anything positive about it. It's also a lot of memorization and a lot of confusing chemicals and formulas and everything like that. But people really enjoy chemistry, but not essentially the class itself. Physics, the one big downfall I've heard of that class is the paper two is next to impossible. And each year they keep making it harder and harder. And I don't like physics, so. <laughs> Okay, so which one to take? A lot of people are actually uh, very science-minded, so they're going to usually pick biology, and then they'll either pick either one of these sciences that they also want to go in, or they'll pick one of their uh, other classes. So, and then which one for HL or SL, you may think? A lot of people are doing HL because um, that will give you uh, more knowledge so that when you actually do come from uh, junior and senior year and go off into college, you'll actually have more knowledge on the content and it will be less work in the, in college than it will be um, in the high school setting if you were to take SL. So, uh, we now move on to group five, which is mathematics. And mathematics, it's, uh, you won't necessarily have a choice. Uh, unless you've taken summer classes or you came with prerequisites, you can't even take HL math. Uh, but uh, assuming you can, these are some of the bonuses of each of them. SL math, way easier. You end with basic uh, level calculus, uh, and you take a lot of statistics and a lot of other things, and you know, generally easier over a longer period of time. Whereas HL math, you're gonna learn a lot more in a, the same amount of time. So a lot of some some things will get sort of you know smushed, and you won't get to learn them as for as long of a time. So you're gonna definitely want to take into consideration that when you choose, should you have the option. Um, HL math, though, you're gonna learn a lot more, and you're almost you're gonna be well set up to pass out of math classes uh, in college if you never want to take math after that. So if you have the chance and you still don't really like math, you might want to take it just to be able to never take math again because you're gonna be so well knowledgeable about it, uh, unless you plan on going into engineering or mathematics as your career. Um, 
Besides that, uh, the bonuses of taking math in general is it's gonna help you with your science, whichever it is, and any of your other classes that may involve statistics. So the biggest downfall in mathematics overall is that it's a lot of class prep, it's a lot of work every night, you get some problems every night to do, and usually at STEM you don't get a lot of overnight homework that you turn in the next day, it's usually papers and stuff like that. However, in SL, it's a lot of work and not very hard concepts, whereas in HL math, it's not as many concepts, but it's much harder, more specific mathematics. Okay, so um, for which math to go through, um, literally they all bring you up to the calculus point uh, at the end of the year. So they're all going to get you there. HL has more in-depth stuff, so they're going to just try and speed past everything to try and learn as much calculus as possible. SL's kind of like that in between, like, okay, I get to actually like take my time and learn up until calculus. And studies... Yeah, so I would I would recommend SL because SL actually allows you to um, learn math without being uh, so slow paced as you would in studies and not too fast paced as you would in HL math. So we finally have gotten to group six. Uh, this is sort of your elective. Uh, you can really choose anything with this period. Uh, the, mo the most common options are psych, econ, design, tech, business, or a second one of those sciences, so bio, chem, or physics. So some bonuses of taking the, the top four is it's some, you're learning something new. You've never seen psych before, you've never seen economics before, you've, never, you've seen a little bit of design tech, but only a little bit you've taken in engineering, and then business you've never seen before. So you're gonna learn something completely new, and it's gonna really help you in the future, uh, especially with with any of these. They can really teach you a lot. Uh, pros of something like design tech is if you want to be an engineer, that's the class for you. It's gonna teach you more skills and how you do projects that really help you along. Psychology, uh, even if you don't want to go into psychology at all, it's a really uh, great class just to learn something new and to sort of be a catch-all uh, for you know invaluable knowledge that you may not that you could use outside of just uh, going into psychology as a field. Econ, you're gonna learn a lot about how uh, money and uh, how the world works. Uh, so paired with history and paired with your math, you're gonna have a lot to work with. And business, obviously, it's always valuable to know how businesses work, so definitely uh, something to recommend there. And in other science, uh, you're gonna learn a lot with another science uh, and really round out. So if you wanna go into science, and you really wanna have sort of a combination of two sciences like biochemistry, you're gonna definitely wanna take bio and chemistry. Uh, but definitely my personal recommendation would be taking one of these classes because when you go to college, you can really take as many sciences and whichever sciences you want and you'll have your major and that such, but really you may not necessarily get a chance to take one of these four classes uh, outside of that as they're very, in depth and you don't get that outside of uh, high school. So some of the cons of each of these classes is that I take psychology and while it is a really great class to learn about the human mind and everything, it's also really difficult to memorize all these different studies about cognitive processes and how the mind works and different disabilities and everything that goes along with that with theories and everything. So it's a lot of information that you need to process and understand in a short amount of time and you really have to know a lot for the IV exams, especially the paper one. Um, econ, I've heard a lot of great things about that. Not very many people take it, but I heard it's a very simplistic class and really like common knowledge, common um, sense kind of class. Design tech I've heard is kind of a waste of time if you want to go into an engineering um, major in college or something like that because it focuses a lot on like um, vocab and like just essentially just really long quizlet lists, um, memorization and stuff like that. And I have never heard anything about business so I can't help you at all with that. I think maybe 10 people take this class and there's really no point in taking business. Um, but another science, we already went through the pros and cons of that, so if you really do like chem, bio, or physics, and you want to take two of them, then go for it. Okay, so on which class to take, I would recommend one of the HLs on this, because in psychology, you go into human relationships, so that's 
basically how do people interact with each other so that's going to actually help you a lot with social skills econ you get to like go more in depth on like econ and just like how money works and all that design tech you get to really like figure out like some engineering skills in that matter so if you're going to want to pursue engineering definitely recommend hl for that one and then if you want to take another science you can uh, honestly whether it's hl or sl is up to you if you really want to pursue these uh being a well well-rounded science student then i would recommend taking an hl one but if you really feel like you want to just be strong-minded in one science and then like kind of study another then that definitely be an sl for one of the chem bio or physics but which one